So, good morning. Good morning. Um, good morning. Hello. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm smiling, but first, um, this happened yesterday. Uh, this is not a good thing, uh, but I still wanted to mention it. Um, at least my, my French colleagues are all okay. I hope all your colleagues and family are all okay. Um, it's not something we can change here, um, but no, uh, I, I did want to mention it. Uh, what also happened is, um, this is a great, uh, small shout out to my liver. Uh, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. John is here as well, and that's quite impressive. I see a lot of faces. So, He's not here for long, though. Uh, let's, see how, let's see how he goes. I'm doing one session today. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm messing up. So, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Ingmar Verheij. You can find me on Twitter at Ingmar Verheij. It's quite easy. Uh, I joined Citrix a little over a year ago, but today uh, it's the weekend and I'm on holiday. I, I won't Yay! be. <laughs> well, maybe uh, I might talk about Octoblue if there's time. But today it really is about the Internet of Things, and we can call it uh, the Internet of Things. Someone called it the Internet of Stupid Things, like, hey, what kind of ideas do you have? Um, the Internet of Everything, the integration of everything, or the industry of toys. This is really, you, you can see IT in many, many aspects, many phases. Today I want to talk to you, uh, or to you, about if you want to do something with IT like really the tech part, the nerd, I, I put the table full with demos I've prepared. I'm not sure if I can do them all, I'm not sure if they work all, uh, just the Wi-Fi which is quite impressive at the end of the week. But today is about IoT, and IoT is basically connecting everything to everything, and um, just you mentioned something about Octoglue, Octoglue is an IoT platform. It's not so much IoT, it's more a platform, and it's connecting different smart devices, uh, Geeky stuff, uh, SaaS services, and it's basically a service best to all IT partners. So, um, I wanted to tell you first how I got into, let's say, hacking things. And when I say hacking, I'm not talking hacking the way Remco does, or <laughs> none of us. And the screen still works uh, at, at, at the reception, but that might have changed. Hacking basically is just, well, using a product the way it wasn't meant to be, or the way it was designed. Uh, so we are basically stretching the limits of what a product can do, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the bad, but um, today it's quite fun. And let me tell you my story, how I got started, uh, which is, I think, two years ago. Um, me and, at the time, my girlfriend, we bought a house. I lived in an apartment, very small. We bought a house, very big, five rooms. And this was all good. Got married, still good. We got a baby, very good. But um, this, this, I'm Dutch. <coughs> this got me thinking. I got a big house. I, I'm now a responsible man. How am I going to pay for all this? I mean, this is a big house. It's going to use a lot of energy. So that got me to thinking. I'm a geek. I love statistics. I like charts. Uh, can I come up with something that is producing the power consumption which I'm actually consuming? So at least I know where all my money is going and. Well, that's it. I'm probably not in the kitchen because I'm lazy. So, I was looking on the internet. How can I measure the power <coughs> consumption that I'm using in my house? Which was, uh, the project was willing to work on. And I found a lot of things in the internet. How do I measure the power consumption? And a lot of people just basically went their fuse box, they took the wires apart, put something in between, and said, well, I can now measure it. And this was something not the path I was willing to choose because even I know there's a limit and, and I've worked with Remco, there's a limit, you can get over the limit, and there's another limit. And three further, that there's you, you, you should stop sometimes. So I found, finally, a project, which is the Open Energy Monitor. It is open, so it's open source. And these guys are in the UK, and basically what they did is they built a, a, an open source platform using Arduinos, and they are measuring the power consumption using these devices. This is a current transducer, and basically it's just a clamp, put the wire in between, do it on top, and it works. So this was a safe way of doing it. So I figured I could do this, I, I, I bought a lot of this, this equipment, and I can now measure my power consumption. What they also have is this. This is 
temperatures and the EMOB TH or temperature and humidity monitor. So I can measure the temperature and humidity in my daughter's room. So I know, know what is her condition, what's the temperature. So this is how I got started, which was so cool. And then this is my actual uh, meter cabinet, the first translation. Mm -hmm. sure. So you can see here, I attach panel. Um, <laughs> you have a patch panel in your house. Sorry, you have a patch panel in your house. Yes, house. it's 11 inch, it fits. This is the base station, it's a Raspberry Pi. You lose your geek stats. You're David. Increasing the level. So here you can see the are the email TXs which are actually gathering the data. It's sending it wireless to the Raspberry Pi. And you can see a lot of cables running there to the fuse box. I had to open it and there are a lot of current transducers. So this was this nice, this cool. Good stuff. Then I found out that there's actually a smart meter, which can do this for you. Nonetheless, <laughs> 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 it was fine. So, the smart meter is here. You see it has a small output. It's an RJ11 or RJ12 connector. Well, the purpose of the smart meter is that, you know, uh, the whole street can read your data. Yes, in the city and everyone else. But it's, that's cool. It's open source, you know, and it's sharing is scary. Occasional hacker. Yeah. <laughs> Like Remco. Like Remco. <laughs> so what? So, so, so one of the more next, next step was um, this is a smart meter, mm -hmm. and I found out on the internet it's, it's it's supposed to be an open protocol. It's ne nowhere documented, but some people actually reverse engineered the protocol and, and they found out. So I built this one. This is an, an Arduino, and basically, if you put on five volts on one of the wires, it starts pulsing uh, over serial every ten seconds. You get your you want more idea. See, you can get all the values. Okay, well, uh, I can see what is my actual uh, power consumption, or how much did I use. So I can now read not only for every group the number of watts per second, per hour, or whatever it is, I can read this as well. So this was the, the second project that I actually completed, or to be honest, this is the, the first one that I actually completed, because the other one was, uh, I just bought it. This one I did. So then, Ingmar. Yes. And you have a full blade with UPS to process all that that consumes more than the rest of your house? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it's going to be cheaper. No. <laughs> the Raspberry Pi is very low energy, really low energy. And it's all setting it wireless, so in the main, the patch panel takes more power than the rest. So, it's a new house. And since it's a new house, you have a lot of environmental regulations. and There is a heat recovery system or uh, beta as we call it in the Netherlands. What it does, basically, it's just passing all the, the airflow to warm water so it's more efficient through your house. You don't have to open the windows. I want to, but you, you don't have to. The thing about the system is, there's a button or a switch. And I found out after two years, there is a switch. And the switch, you're supposed to put it on two during normal operation. And when you take a shower, because you see here, shower in the bathroom, there's Big tube, you have to put it into number three. Because otherwise, there's too much moist or humidity in your bathroom, you get moles on the ceiling, you don't want that. I found out that the switch is actually <laughs> in the cabinet. <laughs> Took me two years, literally two years, actually to find that, that bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hidden. This was really useless, and I was like, okay, so I can go to the, the guy who installed it and say, please fix this, because this is not very useful. Uh, but then again, I was like, hey, I can do this. Maybe, maybe I can do this, but that's not it. Uh, because there's not only a switch, there's a LED, which says, you need to change the filter. After two years, I found out there's a filter. <laughs> so, I started researching, and this is the way you'll start doing IT. You're starting with some research. So I found out there's it's just a switch. It's just really literally a switch uh, connecting different wires. Then I started doing some prototyping. So you can see this is my, my breadboard. And if you start doing this, this is a breadboard. By then, they're really, really useful. Um, and I bought really a lot of stuff. And the thing is, once I start buying, I can't stop. So you know, uh, this is a Do Extreme or Me in the Box. Or something. <coughs> you buy everything, at least that's my uh, the way. Uh, way. Yep. So I found out there's an OLED screen and buttons and sensors and cool stuff. So I started prototyping. This is the actual machine. Oh, this was not supposed to. 
This is the actual machine. <laughs> so what I built was, if I turn the switch, our uh, VN Arduino is actually changing the machine. So it was a proof of concept and checkbox that, that, that works. So the next step was actually building it. So the next step is I built actually a device which is now connected to that specific machine. And I can now wirelessly operate that device. So the next step will be <coughs> after this device. This device basically just measures temperature and humidity. So if I place this one in my bathroom, and when I take a shower, the humidity goes to 90, maybe 100%. So instead of me flipping the switch, <coughs> I can just measure if it's over 90%, flip the switch for me. So that's, that's cool. the next step. <laughs> Not there. I, I only started in January, so <laughs> this takes time. And January. This year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This year, this year, January. So pretty. I'm out of school. Your real life as well. Uh, yeah, that's why it's taking so. so <laughs> I said a wife and a daughter, so yeah. It's. I won't, I'm not going to say it's complex. It's just it takes a lot of time. It's a hobby. If you consider the hobby, it's really, cool. it's really nice. So, but it's doable, especially now that I'm hooking this one to Octoblue. It's going to my life's going to get a lot easier than building it all on my own. Um, but this is the way I got started in this. So, without further ado, October 6th, uh, as I said, or Pacific, we hosted an event and I did a session about IoT. <coughs> Why is IoT important for you, for me, for the business, really the enterprise side of things. Nonetheless, that was a good excuse to borrow the Lego Mindstorm of my colleague's children <laughs> and do a demo, but since we're 40 minutes, I'll skip it for now. If we have enough time, I'll get, yes, I didn't bring it anyway because it's not mine. If we have time, I'll start explaining how I've done it. Because Thomas Poppelgaard was really asking me every week. So I figured I'll explain it during the session. <coughs> Thomas, you're not here. So, <laughs> sorry. Next thing, how to get started. Really the most important part. How do you get started if you want to do this? Really, let's say, the geeky part. Three things. Choose your thing or your weapon of choice. You need to know what is GPIO, because that's one of the basics. And even more, what about, that? what about electronics? What do you need to know to get started? So first the thing, didn't know how to name it. Basically you have three, randomly three choices. You have Arduinos. These are Arduinos, not another one here. This, these things are cheap, they're really cheap. If you buy an official Arduino, it's an open source project again, around 30 euros. If you buy a fake, <coughs> two, three dollars a piece. So, really nothing. And this is just a microcontroller. Really big difference between these devices and the Raspberry Pi and the Intel Edison is that the Raspberry Pi is actually a computer. It is a computer that runs an OS using Linux and you're using Python to make applications. And since it's a computer, it can you know, run multiple threads, multiple processes, you can do a lot with it, but it's really hard to get started with a Raspberry Pi for this stuff. Arduino is really easy. It's a microcontroller. You upload a program, that's what it does. It just loops. Nothing more, nothing less. So it's really the best way to start. It's the way that we start. And the Intel Edison is really cool. Intel really is diving into the, the IoT market, the enterprise IoT market. And they are building devices for IoT in the enterprise. So they're not cheap. They're probably really good, but for me it's not, not there yet. So Arduino is yes, Raspberry Pi, it's a computer. This is a Raspberry Pi. It's just a, a, credit, a credit card size computer. It's a computer. But all these things have GPIO pins. And that's what we need. If you want to, sorry for Ryan. <laughs> I'll send the slides. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Know the difference, especially those two. Arduino, microcontroller, very easy, low level, that's really fine. Just going to ask, are you going to put this presentation up on your website? Sure. Great. I'll share. So, Arduinos. You have a different, really a range of different Arduino devices. 
Arduino Uno is the best way to start because it's, it's the, the default form factor. It was the first that they created. There are a lot of things you can plug in, you can buy cases for it. For prototyping, it's the best device. Definitely. It's not expensive, it's cheap, it's easy. There's a bigger one, it's called the Mega, if you want to do Mega things. I, I still haven't seen the value of it, it's bigger. And as you see, they're all smaller, so this is a, the Nano, this is the, the Mini, the Pro Mini. It, it, it's all a little bit different, but the basics is the same, or are the same. And it runs the same applications. So if you can build something on the Uno, you can build it on this as well. And since these are smaller, they're probably better for well, the devices I built, for my heat recovery system. We go for the email first. And the cool thing about Arduinos is it's not only cheap, it's not only easy, there are so many devices or sensors that you can buy, it's, it's just... I'm not telling you that I've got them all, but I've got a lot of them. So, <laughs> you probably have them all twice, at least. Correct. <laughs> Two or three times. I've got a lot of stuff. Don't tell my wife what I spent. But. <laughs> So for instance, this is a flame sensor detection uh, device. Um, I'm not allowed to use it today, because I was not allowed to make fire today. Today. <laughs> Alex is not recording, so... Yeah, but there's, there's no physical evidence. No one is wearing a ring cape or, you know, with an umbrella, it's going to get messy. But I'll show you a video afterwards. The cool thing is, there are so many sensors you can buy, you can do everything. You can spend a whole year on prototyping and thinking of things that you never imagined. It's just fun. And another cool thing about these three key components is there's a really large community. Really large community. And uh, as we all know, large community is good. We can learn from each other. And well, there's so many info about every sensor, about any project. Uh, it's really good. So I'll show some sensors later on. GPIO. This is important to know, or at least that was one of the obstacles I had to, to pass. It's a general purpose input output pin. So, all these pins over here, these are the GPIO pins. This is what you get if you start Googling on an Arduino and what is GPIO? Because I got started and just wanted to hook up one device. I just wanted to pulse the, the, the smart meter and get data. Uh, I didn't know what pin to use, what is a pin, what does it do. And this is what it was. <coughs> it was massive. And it's not focused on. If you know what it is and you're, you're diving into it, it's actually pretty easy. But this is really intimidating. The interesting <laughs> thing is that this is the Arduino Uno. If you Google Raspberry Pi pinout, you're getting the same diagram. If you're Googling for a Intel Edison pinout, same diagram. So if you can read one, you can read them all. It's really easy. So, normally, I would spend a lot of time explaining all the pins but we don't have so much time. <coughs> so it's in the back. If we have enough time today, I'll start explaining. Two things are really important. Again, you know, digital pins and analog pins. So you can actually read analog data, voltages. You usually use the digital pins. And basically, every pin can do input and output. So you have roughly 15, 16 pins you can control devices with. So 16 LEDs, 16 sensors, um, everything is on smart stuff. So know that this is really the, the, one of the most important things to know, digital and analog. So, this is me, the GPO pins, I got that. And I want to go back a few years when I was, when I was a little boy, not too long ago. I think I was 14, 15 years old. I grew up with electronics. There were certain boxes you can buy, and you can build projects at school. So I was at a crossroad. Am I choosing my career in electronics, or am I choosing my career in IT? I chose IT, you know this? But I dropped all the other things. I didn't do it. <laughs> so it was good. So I had to really go back in time and learn what is electronics? What are the basics? Really the basics I need to know. So, let's go back to 101. Electricity. There's a positive charge and a negative charge. A positive charge, well, basically it sends out electrons. And a negative charge, it attracts those electrons. Meaning that electricity is flowing from positive to negative. So you can see it as 
Here's my excuse. Okay. Eat, 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 eat. I need an excuse for it. So, this is positive. The bottom of the glass is negative. <laughs> <laughs> this is the basic principle of electronics. <laughs> Four basics. Amperage, voltage, and watts. We hear them all day, every day. We know what it is, but we don't know what it is. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, let's say I didn't know what it was, you probably know. But let me explain. Amperage is basically the amount of energy which is flowing through your device or your wire. So you can see that's a bottle of water. This could have been beer, but it shows water. And I'll explain later why. So how much water do I need to pass through the device? And you can also see it with the uh, mobile phone charges, the number of amper, uh, amperage, something, uh, the more you can charge your phone. But this is pretty easy. How much energy? The next thing is the voltage. We run 230 voltage uh, volt over here in Europe. It is the force of the energy flow. So if you can see it as a hose, you can see that low voltage and high voltage is basically low voltage is dripping water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and high voltage is water. <laughs> Everyone will learn that from She is a humidity center. <laughs> yes. And well, once is average type voltage, that's the number of power you actually been consuming. So, the basics. The next step, what you'll do when you're building, is that sometimes there's just too much voltage and you need a resistor. These are small devices, a resistor. It's just that easy. It creates a resistance the formula. So, if you take a lot of water, and it's flowing, so positive to negative. If you add a resistor, you'll just have less voltage passing through. So a resistor, you can see as your wife saying, really take, want to take another beer, or maybe you should slow down. That's a resistor. So, let me start with the first demo. This is, you can see. What's the electronics equivalent of Jim Wall saying, nah, have another one, you're fine. <laughs> Let me think about that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. What you can see here is there are three re resistors on the left. And what I forgot was, where is it? Let me upload. This is a, a really tiny, small, can you read it? No. It's too bad. <laughs> what you can see here is this is a really tiny program for an algorithm. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm defining the pins, digital pin two, three, and four. I'm telling him pin uh, one, two, three, or three, two, three, four is an output pin. I don't want energy flowing in. I want to send something out. And uh, then I'll just do a loop saying turn the LED on, turn it off. So with a delay of one second. Everyone who ever wrote a small program, batch script, PowerShell, this is easy. This is really one of one. So all we have to do is upload sketch. It's <coughs> compiling, it's uploading, it's connected over USB, just a serial port. And now, not my Wi-Fi. You can see, maybe not so good on the screen, three LEDs, and every LED has a different uh, resistor in different strength. So the more, oh, the more resistance there is, the less power you can see on the LED. Really, at electronics 101. So resistor, that's that's really easy. This thing is really interesting. The transistor. Of course, we all love them because without a transistor, we would not have had a job. Computers are built out of millions of transistors making a computer. So, these are transistors, really small, really, really interesting. You can use them in two ways. It's either an amplifier or a switch. And this is the interesting part for us. Because when you start doing IoT, basically what we're doing, we're hacking into devices and usually that means I want to press a button or do something which normally has a button, uh, but I want to control it over internet or Wi-Fi or uh, based on a symptom. 
So how does the transistor work? Uh, as you can see, I put down CVE, the three pins it has. It's a collector, it's the base and emitter. So it's very easy. There's energy or current flowing through the collector, the water, and it's flowing through or out of the emitter. If I put a current on the base, to the middle pin, it actually starts flowing. So hence why we say it's an amplifier, because I only need a small amount of current here <coughs> to make a bigger water flow or energy flow through the transistor. And it's a switch because with this, I can put something on or off. So it's a switch. There are basically two types of transistors. It's an NPN, which is negative plus negative. So you can see with a positive charge here, there's a negative charge flowing through the transistor. And of course, there's another one, it's called PNB. Positive, negative, positive. So depending if I want to switch a positive or a negative charge, I choose the one or the other. So a transistor you can see is Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one small man who can make a large group drink beers. Or the ten. And this picture is taken two years ago in Rome, E3 of Rome. It was a good night. It was not in the early evening. But as you can see, we were not only drinking beers or wine, we got some glasses because there were those, those sales people like, ah, oh, buy these glasses, no, it's not, not very expensive. And we sent them back and they came back and oh, it took a while. Okay, sure, let's buy the glasses. We should be done. Not really. He came back, he's like, oh, I got this one. You have to buy it. Oh. Wasn't this where you negotiate with him for 45 minutes? Yes. <laughs> I think he started at 10 euros. Yeah. No, 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 no. no I got them cheap. It was all euros. And finally, he was like, okay, for one euro, I'll buy it. He's like, oh, wait. So he started at 10. Uh, don't buy for 10. And I promised, Alex, this one will make a return. Because what this is, this is a beer, bear, bear. No beer. beer. That's, sorry. <laughs> this is This is the beer. Dog. It's a dog. It's a dog. It's a dog. It's a dog. Sorry. <laughs> After two years. Ah, that explains. <laughs> it's a dog. <laughs> if you press his foot, it started dancing. Which is cool. We did that a few times at the table and in the airport. But since it's a switch, I can control the switch using my RV or whatever. Because it's just a switch. If I have a transistor, I can press the button with this. So. Let me first by uploading a new program. This one I won't show you fully because it's a bit more complex. <coughs> and let me hook up. We call them Hans. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> and so, there we go. Should picture of me, by the way. So you can see now, there is the wires. And there's a little black device, which is the transistor. And as I said, there's, you can use input, you can use output. One of those input things is this one, infrared. So I can I use a remote control to start controlling things. <laughs> so I, I promise IoT, the I is coming later. But in theory, with a remote, I can now control Hans, the dog, not the bear. <laughs> I don't need Wi-Fi, so in theory, the demo should work. Hands up, will it work? Yes. Ah, if you expected me. <laughs> See. <laughs> See. That's why we love it. That's pretty funny. But as you can see, the transistor is really a, a, it's a magical device. You can switch everything, even this dog, with a really tiny, tiny, tiny device. So, really, really important piece. Really cool thing about these sensors is you can read everything, anything. So one of those things is, uh, as I said, I got this, this temperature humidity sensor. This blue thing, two euros, three euros something, you have one as well. It just reads, it's a DHT, so it's a digital temperature and humidity sensor. Let me get Hans out of the way. So what I can do, there you go. See, I pause. How much did you pay for a berry? 
Twenty. I didn't negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing is that yes, it's connected over USB, but it's just a serial reader. So we can read and write on the serial. So we can also read what he's doing. So whenever I press, uh, let's say number two, LED number two goes on, which you can see. There you go. Number two is on. Number three is on. So input out. Exit see it over here. But I can also ask, what is the temperature? So I have a sensor that's saying it's 80, 18 degrees over here, Celsius. That's 42% of humidity. <laughs> but I've also got is these things. These things are RFID tags. And an RFID sensor is actually pretty cheap. Again, it's, everything's cheap. It's four to five years. So I can now, all I have to do is place them here. This is Mr. White. This is Mr. Blue. So really cheap, we can start building systems like an access control system or uh, if I want a coffee, you know, here's your badge, you can get some coffee in your home. You can make a lot of, lot of strange things. Really, you just need to start thinking out of the box. Then while I was preparing, I doubt got seven minutes. Oh, no. I need to speed up. So, I was buying those sensors, and then I found this one. <laughs> Any idea yeah. what it is? Yep. Okay. Let me start doing this. Nothing happens, right? <laughs> 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 I think we have somebody who will score positive without doesn't <laughs> <laughs> okay. work. Ask Jim. Mr. Moody, try it. Mr. Moody. This, so this should work out. Oh. I tested this so many times. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty hard. I had to drink it the entire week. So what it is, it's an alcohol sensor. It's a breath analyzer. Hence why I had to have it. It's a breath analyzer. Because you have a better excuse than that. So you rigged it out of your car where you were already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks for worrying, by the way. <laughs> yep. Nice. Ah, I need to drink more. Sorry. Dude, <laughs> dude, no need. <laughs> yes. You can try it. You know what, I'll just take this. Woo! Here we go. <laughs> I'll, I'll just change the value because... Ah, too under technology. See? It's he not set another demo or chance to it. If you can control it, it's, it's fine. <laughs> exactly. That's why I had to buy it. You didn't do this as a partner. partner you can <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Tea! Oh! Tea! If you drink, the party gets started. Plenty of time. Another basic theory I kind of have to explain. What I just did is I used a small amount of energy, drinking a beer, to switch a really large amount because there's a laser connected over 230 volts. There are some challenges in there because uh, we need to separate two clubs. But in galvanic isolation is basically the principle of isolating functional sections or electro electronic sections as you can see here in the water because uh, the microcontroller runs 5 volts and this thing runs 230 volts. It's not, it's, it won't end well. Uh, if you put 230 volts on those small devices, <laughs> this will happen. <laughs> it's just... Oh, ow. Ah, too bad. See, everything burns. So, it's not a good idea. <laughs> Always a good idea. So, for that, in order to switch a really big current, we need a relay. And you can find relays everywhere, in your car, in your television. A relay is really easy. Basically, it's the same as a transistor, only it's really physically separated. The two flows of current are physically separated. And it uses a magnet to turn it on or off. So it's the same principle as a transistor, only this is a magnet. If you put on a current, it opens the flow and it starts working. So, in an ono diagram, which I didn't make from the internet, if you put a charge on here, 
it just attracts or detracts the switch. So if you want to switch bigger currents, or you don't want to blow up your stuff, you need to look at relays. And again, really cheap. And I can turn on the laser. I promise lasers. So, internet side of things. I promised IoT. If you start this with IoT, with uh, sorry, Arduinos, there are official shields. And shields are those things you can just plug in into your uh, UNO. That's why you have the UNOs, it's the same form factor. They're pretty expensive. 25 euros for Ethernet and 85 euros for Wi-Fi. These things are like 20, 10 euros something. So didn't make sense. Then there's knockoff, so this is an Ethernet shield. Cost me five euros. Never use it. I had to have it. There's let's say knockoff Wi-Fi, the CC3000. And later on, really later on, I found these small things. It's the ESP8266. If you follow me on Twitter, you see me doing weird stuff about these, this Wi-Fi. This is the most, this really interesting device because it's, yeah, ooh, it's really cheap, but it also has GPIO pins. So this thing, this, these small things can actually run on their own. So you can imagine if you put this one in your coffee machine, you could control your coffee machine with just that and some, some power. So Internet of Things, cool thing is that if you give this Internet, you get nothing. You just gave your Arduino or your device an IP address. And then, you got nothing. It's, it's cool, but you got nothing. So, hence Octoblue. As I said, Octoblue is an IT platform. You can run Octoblue on uh, your microcontrollers. You can run Octoblue on any device, nearly any device. And they have a gateway. So, my Raspberry Pi, and let me start preparing. And this is this is where I'm going to connect to the internet, and the demo will probably fail because E2E and in internet is usually a challenge. I just uploaded a sketch, this is a sketch called Tentacle. So this is a tentacle of Octoblue. I'm connecting it to my gate blue. So this this is my my gateway to the internet. I'm not exposing my five door uh, Arduino with my few dollars, few dollars Wi-Fi to it. Because those Wi-Fi modules, they're cheap, they run, they run, but they're really not safe. They're really easy to hack, really. The good thing about this gig is it runs on a Raspberry Pi, it's a computer, we can harden it. It makes sure that not everything is exposed to random. <laughs> <laughs> consider, <laughs> yes, consider. So Gateblue is a gateway you can connect your device into, for instance, an Arduino. Um, if you start doing IoT, don't just expose all devices to the internet. You will get hacked. And if you are connecting your, your I don't know, your, your home to the internet, things could potentially go wrong. So this is really where Octoblue in, let's say, your home automation is interesting, but also in the offices. But um, I won't go into detail. So, I promised something about MacGyver. Who of you know MacGyver? <laughs> so I was telling my wife, I'm going to do a session, I'm preparing all these demos, what are you doing? Well, I'm preparing, I, I want to do a demo about MacGyver. She didn't know, and that was my, uh, I couldn't explain. So, MacGyver, you know, the guy who was very creative, he just needed this, this Swiss Army knife, some, some duct tape, duct tape. <laughs> I don't know, that was them. Exactly. it's all I needed, it's really easy. So, there is a lady in distress. Let's see how this demo works out. <laughs> so what I built, let me, let me get the camera. Clear. It's the last demo. I spent the most time on this demo and it will probably fail. I built this. And basically what this is, there's a sensor over here reading, let's say, the, uh, the laser. So I'm going to put on a beam. So the story is that MacGyver is about to rescue the lady in distress. She's been captured by evil men, and they have a laser system set up so no one can talk to the lady. Clever MacGyver, you know, he sees there's a system, he looks up some other device, and he's going to create a distraction. That distraction was supposed to be creating fire. I'm not allowed to create fire <laughs> today. <laughs> because, as you might know, Steve Greenberg, CDPs, we did a session about IoT and Synergy. 
some people said you need to top Steve Beamer. You need to be, you know, you had to the next level. And I was like, he had fire, he had laser, he had smoke, he didn't have fire. So that's that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> didn't realize probably not a good idea to put fire in a hotel. So nonetheless, what you can see here is a motor. We just connected to this device. So smart Mr. MacGyver, he connected this and let me show you what happens. There is <laughs> this device, it's now connected. This is the, the trap of the evil man. As you can see here, maybe not. There's uh, a small thing. Hey, this is my Wi Fi. This hey. It's connected to Octopus. On the other hand, we have Twitter. How do you get all this security in? You mean at the airport? Yeah. Uh, somehow it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so then I got my laptop, and I have to go back. Right. They, they never looked at it, I don't know. Right. You want to take it home? I think that will be a problem. <laughs> yeah. That's why you asked me to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will see you at the airport, then go. <laughs> you know how to do it. Uh, I think I, I, I forgot what I did. So this is up to right? It's workflow, it's an engine. And what I build is basically I'm reading tweets with hashtag eat me demo. I'm the only one who does that. Every five seconds, I'm demultiplexing it. Did I send the tweet? So you can try one more. <laughs> Demultiplying the hashtag. Is there laser on in the hashtag? Then I'm going to turn on the laser. Maybe. So if I'm lucky, that actually works. Go, it's in. And now every five seconds you can see it pulsing, pulsating. What is it? And in theory, within a few seconds you'll see that this flow starts. And this one, this is my Arduino standing here. Oh, bad news. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Second to myself. So the theory is there it works. And it worked. In the past it did work. Because I know Alex is, is walking in within seconds to kick me out. And I don't want that. There we go. No, you're not allowed. Ah well done, well done. <laughs> 